What is up guys? Today I'm going to show you how to disassemble and reassemble the Lander 2. Let's get into it. So the thing about the Lander 2 is we have these fast swap scales on here. So the first thing you're gonna do is remove the four screws up on both sides. So you got a pivot screw, screw scale screw, and then you've got clip screws. So you got T8s on the scale screw, and I'm just gonna throw them here on my tool burrito, magnetized. So remove those guys, and then I'm gonna come in with a T6. If you're using one of our bit drivers, just swap the bit. I'm using two bit drivers, because I'm in a hurry. Okay, and we're gonna pull out the clip insert, and we're gonna pull out the clip screws. I always like to leave them on there, just for ease. Keeps them safe. Now on the inside, you've got two frame screws, and then that's it on both sides. So when you are removing screws, sometimes you'll get a feisty one that doesn't wanna come out. Give it pressure, downward pressure with your palm, push in, and then turn it and break the Loctite in there. Basically, we put Loctite on our screws to make sure that they don't come out. But when you're disassembling, sometimes, this is another good example, you'll get a little bit of pressure behind it, push in with your palm, and break it. And you'll actually feel it. A lot of times it will kind of like, not snap, but just there's a visible, not visible, a tangible, that's the word I wanted. There's a tangible release when that blue Loctite breaks. If you don't feel that tangible release, don't force it because that will strip your screws. Okay, secondary pivot screw off. And then there's two sets of scales off. So when you get to the inside, you've got all the hardware here. You got two frame screws, except for this one. Little thing, I lost a frame screw. This is actually my personal carry. And uh, one thing that I was really passionate about, and this is such a pain in the butt for the factory, for Kaiser, for me and everyone, but we actually include spare hardware in the box on every single one of these. So new Omega Springs, clip screws, and scale screws are in the box. So I'm missing a screw. I'll pull that out when we do, dis when we do reassembly. So first thing I'm gonna do is pull out these frame screws. And the frame screws are actually the same screw as the scale screw. They are kind of this flat, uh, portion here and then the clip screws are T6s. So that's how you know the difference between a frame screw and a clip screw. Now we're gonna pull out the other side too. In fact, I'm missing screws both of those places. Must have been in a hurry one day. So we'll pull all those screws off and then the knife will actually stay together uh, at this point as well because it is held together by those Omega Springs. There's pressure on them and tension. So I'm gonna open up the knife, move those aside, open up the knife and I'm gonna disengage the clutch lock here. Now the clutch lock, you just pull up right on that Omega spring and that comes right off. I'll do it on both sides and that will come right out. And then the crossbar lock, that little crossbar there is gonna just float right out of there. You kind of have to finagle it. When I'm disassembling, if I'm cleaning a knife, I actually like to leave the Omega Springs on there because there's a left and a right-handed Omega Spring. So I like to leave them attached to the crossbar. It just makes things easier and I don't have to think about it later. I will have to think about it, but not as hard. Then you got your liner and you've got your uh, stop pin that is still connected there. Uh, on the inside of this, you've got the bearings. So you've got caged ceramic bearings as well as a bushing. Now I wanted a bushing on this thing so that when you tighten the pivot, you can tighten it pretty dang good. That bushing has a notch on it, so it's indexed to be able to, it doesn't free spin on you. So that's a nice thing about it. So all of your parts just sit in here, and if you wanted, you could come in and clean this off, bring your polishing cloth in here. This has got some lint on it. Uh, do the old Nick Chabaz trick. I actually love Nick. I could watch Nick all day. Uh, disassemble knives. I'm not gonna clean it the way Nick does. Uh, we are the manufacturer, and I feel like it's all right. He likes a lot more lube than I. Next thing I'm gonna do is put a little, a lot, an incredible amount of knife pivot lube into the pivot area. Whoops. Okay, so now you've got your, you've got your two liners, and you'll notice on these liners, there is a silver portion, and if, it's, if it is a satin interior, this is a trick you can use on any knife, it's, if it's satin on the inside, you'll be able to see where the bearings wear against the steel. So you're not going to put those two sides together, you're going to put the um, satin portion where the wear is, those go together. So first thing I'm gonna do to reassemble, I like to reassemble from like a platform. So I'm gonna take that right scale, and th let me talk about this philosophy for just a minute. You might wanna disassemble because you just went to the sand dunes and you got sand all in your knife. Disassemble it, wash it down if you want. You can lube all this stuff on the inside up to make sure it's working right. You might have really nasty, linty pockets and that would be an opportunity to clean it as well. 
My knives kind of stay linty, but not crazy. So I don't do a ton of disassembly, but I do enjoy it. And some people really enjoy just taking them apart and putting them back together. So that is what we're gonna do right now. What I'm gonna do is build this little platform. I'm gonna take the right scale, and then I'm going to take the barrel spacers right here. And these barrel spacers are indexed as well so that they do not free spin. And I, I insist that we do that uh, when we make knives because it just makes disassembly and assembly that much easier. I'm gonna grab my T8. I'll stick the screw on the end of that. And when I put screws together, it's always lefty loosey, righty tighty. I'll go lefty loosey first till I hear a click. When I hear that click, I know that I'm not cross threading. So there's my click and then I go righty tighty. Fun little tricks. And then you're gonna put the other barrel spacer back in. Again, it's indexed. I'm gonna grab one of those frame slash scale screws. Should put it on the tip of the thing first. I've got my barrel spacers back in there. So now I kind of have a platform that I can start working off. I'm going to take my uh, bearing and I'm gonna take my, my little, uh, what do we call that? The bushing is what we're gonna call that. I'm gonna get the bushing in on my platform. I'm gonna put the bearing in there. This might be a good time to lube if you would like to lube. I do not want to. And then I'm gonna put the knife on here. So I've kind of built up this platform right here that is ready to start putting other pieces and parts on. The next piece and part I'm gonna put on is my other liner. Again, there's your silver side right there. That silver side is gonna be facing toward the bearing. So I'm gonna just drop that right there on top. That's gonna to line up with your stop pin on the back, your barrel spacers back here. And let me make sure, yep, I did put the bearing in. So your bearing, it goes, you're gonna have a little bearing sandwich here. You're gonna have bearing, knife, bearing, then liner. The liner's gonna sit there right on top. Now at this point, I like to take my scale screws, my frame screws, same thing, and drop them on here on the back. Because this is gonna hold it together so I can use my fingers. Boom, and boom, right there. And then I'm gonna drop this one in here. Just like that. One interesting thing, and, and one thing I'm really, really passionate about is the right to repair. I want you to be able to take your knives apart. I want you to be able to repair them. In fact, inside of every lander, I include a schematic. So there's a schematic with every single part number, and you'll be able to find rebuild kits on the website. So if you lose a part, number one, it ships with spare parts. And then number two, the schematic is in there. So if you've lost a part, look at the schematic, check out nafs.com and then buy the extra part and you can put it on your knife. Uh, I was here the other night working on schematics and it's a huge pain in the butt, but I actually feel very, very passionately about that because I don't want you to buy a pocket knife and then just throw it away when it breaks. Like, or if, it, if you lose a screw and you can't carry it, like I want you to be able to repair it and I, I feel so strongly about that. When we put this back in, you've got your left Omega spring and your right. Again, I like to keep them attached to the crossbar, but if they have come undone, you have to remember there's a little notch on the end of this Omega spring, and that, Omega, that notch is going to go into the frame. So the notch needs to be facing in toward the handle. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna thread it through just like that, and then I'll get that crossbar where it needs to go. Scream at it, yell at it, hold please. This is where it kind of gets wiry, right? Two very boring minutes later. There it goes. So sometimes that might be a little difficult. You might have to kind of finagle it. You need to just slide right up into there. And then this is where the coolest thing Kaiser let us use is the clutch lock. And clutch lock allows you to adjust the tension on the knife. So if you want it looser, put your Omega spring in the hole further away. If you want it tighter, that will compress that spring more and you can have more tension on your uh, crossbar lock on your clutch lock. So I'm gonna pull that over. Sometimes it, it helps to take your Torx tool. We're just gonna jimmy that in. I'm gonna go three from the end on that one. Give it a good push and I'm gonna match it on the other side. So adjustable tension, is it gimmicky? Maybe. Some people like their crossbars more uh, firm and others like it less firm. So I'm gonna adjust that to right in the middle 
and my crossbar is back in place, that clutch lock is operational. Now, I would never recommend carrying a knife like this. Obviously, it doesn't have the pivot screws in it, but this is a dangerous knife because the tip is poking out right there, so you don't wanna do that. You wanna put those scales back on. I'm gonna put that front scale on, and I'll take that pivot screw and just drop it in there. This is a T8, so I'll grab my T8 screw here. I always go left first, left first, then right. Boom. And then I'm gonna throw the other scale on. Let me go with my clip screws. Just, I like to put the pivot on because then I know for sure, like this thing is not gonna fall apart in my hands in terms of reassembly. So I'll throw that pivot screw back on there. Left first, wait for the click, boom. And then righty tighty all the way. And I don't need to adjust it all the way. I'll come back and work on blade centering in just a minute. Next thing I'm gonna do is throw that pocket clip insert in there. And this is gonna be a T6 again, switching to the T6 screwdriver. Left first, then right. And uh, if you want, you can throw a drop of uh, Loctite on here or blue thread locker, if you will, and rock and roll that way. And then I'm gonna throw the clip on the back, right like that. Left first, then right. Boom, boom. I was watching Bob Ross paint the other day. He has these amazing quips and little stories as he paints. I need more quips and stories, folks. We'll get there. Okay, so I got my screws on. However, I, I think what happened is we ended up using the frame screws on the inside and I am missing my scale screws. Literally have no idea where they went. This has kind of been passed around, around the shop. So this is where spare parts is your friend. I'm just gonna dump them all out right there on the burrito with the magnets on it. I'm looking for not a T6, I'm looking for a T8. So there's a T8, that's gonna be a frame and a scale screw. In this case, we're gonna use it as a scale screw. Left first, then right, crank that down, doesn't have to be crazy tight. And then we'll throw this other side. And I probably should have done that before I put the pocket clip on, but we're gonna make it work today. Boom, just like that. Now, your knife is all back together. The thing I'm gonna check for is blade centering. I want that blade to be directly down the middle of those two sides, the, the two handle scales. So at this point, looking down, at it, it's actually pretty dang close, but then I'm gonna check the action. And if it's too loose, I will tighten up that pivot just a little bit. And I think for my taste, I'm gonna tighten it just a hair on both sides of this thing. And uh, blade centering is still on, so anytime you adjust the pivot on a knife, then go back and check your blade centering. And uh, rock and roll, just like that. Fun part about this knife is these scales are open source, so if you have a 3D printer, you can go print your own, rock and roll with the files. So that is the Lander 2 disassembly. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. We will do our very best to answer them. And thanks for watching. I'm trying to do more videos. In fact, I didn't even talk about this. This is the very first video filmed in our storefront. When I designed the storefront, I was thinking it would be storefront in the morning or in the afternoon and video studio, studio in the morning, and to me, Filming this in here is exciting. So thank you guys for coming along on the journey. Be sure to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. That is a hard word to say. Subscribe and we will do more content like this in the future. Have an excellent day.